Psalms 52, 42. I'm glad you were paying attention. As the heart panteth after the water works, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, Where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with the multitude that kept the holy day. Verse 5. Why art thou cast down? O my soul, why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou. I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You can do what you want to do. We invite you now. We open the floor to you. Say whatever you need to say to us. We're sitting here because we need to hear from you. We've heard from everybody else. Now we need to hear from you. Speak in the word that changes our lives. Speak in a manner that makes us understand you more clearly. Love you more dearly. Follow you more near. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You take your liberties and be seated as we continue to discuss the concept of management. This month, being this as March management, and we've been trying to communicate how life is just a continual task of trying to manage. And I mean, no, it's the most, the hardest job you'll ever have is trying to manage life. Yes, yes, yes. Today, I want to talk about managing emotions. I want to talk about managing emotions. And for a reoccurring theme, topic, title, I need you to put your hand on your own head or on your own heart and just call your name out and say, keep it together. <laughs> All I've been doing every day, yes, yes, yes. all I've been doing every day is telling myself, Jimmy, keep it together. Yes, Several times a day this week, past few months, I just keep it. All right, all right, all right. I need you to just go ahead one more time and just all say, right. Somebody gonna get free in here. The real issue, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, the real issue that we all face is not spiritual. The real challenge in our lives is not spiritual. I know they would be silent. Your problem. My problem is not spiritual. We spiritualize things because we don't want to deal with them. And we don't want to admit. It, it seems easier to make everything a spirit. Have you ever seen people, everything is a spirit? Amen. Got the spirit of lateness. 
the spirit of evil. Everything is a sin. And that is really antithetical to the scriptures. Because even when we deal with salvation, salvation is not a work of the flesh. It is a work of the spirit. It is by the spirit for the spirit. Our real issue is not spiritual, it is emotional. You and I will be honest, the war that goes on within us is not a spiritual war. The war that goes on within us all the time is an emotional war. Now when I suggest emotional war, I'm dealing with the consciousness of a man. There are three areas of consciousness that all of us deal with. Whether we deal with them concurrently or separately, there are three areas of consciousness that we all deal with. And the first one is, I have in fact a world consciousness. I am aware of my world, my world. World consciousness is the fact that I am aware of my surroundings. <laughs> I feel cold when it's cold outside. I feel hot when it's warm outside. If, if it rains, I feel wet. Are you hearing me? I have a consciousness you are you can touch. You are affected with your world consciousness. I'm affected by the policies and the procedures and the political uh, agendas of those who are in place. My life is affected. That's my world consciousness. I'm affected by what happens in the environment. That's world consciousness. I cannot, you do not go through a day without being affected by something in your environment. Amen. And the only time you are not affected is when you don't have a sense of world consciousness. The second level of consciousness is self-consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, boy. Uh, let me do this out of order. Uh, I don't want to get self-conscious, and I want to leave that for last. The, the second level, then, I want to talk about is our God consciousness. And all of us have God consciousness. We are, we are created in the image and the likeness of God. God is spirit, so we are spirit first. As a matter of fact, we are spirits that possess, possess a soul that live in a body. That's what gives us our three levels of consciousness. My body knows the world. Uh, my spirit knows her God, is God. But my soul knows me. And that is where my conflict is. My conflict is self-consciousness. All of us, if we be honest, we struggle in the area of self-consciousness. We are constantly, Derek, on a quest to make sure that we are good enough. We, we measure our self-worth by particular um, innate uh, standards that we make for ourselves. That's why husbands, that's why boyfriends don't ever fall into the trap of answering a self-conscious question by your woman. Um, she's getting dressed and she gets in the mirror and she asks you a very self conscious question. I'm trying to help you. It's a trap. Uh, how do I look in this? Am I too fat? Okay, y'all keep looking straight. That's a self-conscious question because it doesn't matter how you answer it, you will never have the right answer. You just saying that. Um, you didn't really look. <laughs> you just try to tell me the truth. It's because it's a self-conscious question. And all of us have to deal with our self-conscious. The self-conscious awareness is that where we have the most challenge. People compare themselves to others. And it doesn't matter what others think. Okay, let me try it like this. Have you ever dealt with people who are insecure? Yes. To understand that an insecure person cannot be made secure by you. Yes. To 
can I just can I just help you for a minute? People who suffer with insecurity can never be fixed by another. They always look for someone to help them, but the reality is you are if you do and you are if you don't. Okay, y'all fill in the blank. Uh, because security must come from the inside. And anytime you put your faith of security in another person, you will always be grossly disappointed and you do not understand the power in which you have that God has given you. He never intended for you and I to be insecure. Uh, insecure comes from um, a skewed self-image. When you don't see yourself right, then you believe that other people see you the way you see yourself. I'm going to preach right now. I'm going to try this. When you don't have a healthy self-image of yourself, it doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what someone tells you. Um, you can, okay, you don't believe me. Let, let's try it this way. Um, um, uh, who is it? Gideon. The angel comes to Gideon and says, Thou mighty man of valor. Gideon's problem was not spiritual. Lord, I praise you. Gideon was not struggling with the power of God. Gideon was not struggling with Jehovah. Gideon was struggling with self-consciousness. Gideon was struggling with his low self-esteem. Because the first thing that comes out of Gideon's mouth after the angel of the Lord telling him, watch what he says, thou mighty man of valor. Gideon responds, you got the wrong address. Okay. The, I'm going to try it again till y'all get it. The angel of the Lord comes to Gideon and tells him, you are a mighty man of valor. And Gideon tells the angel of the Lord, you have the wrong address. And I'm going to prove to you why you have the wrong address. Because I belong to um, the most insignificant tribe in all of Israel. And not only that, but my family is the least significant family in the tribe. And I am the least significant one in my family. His self-image was so skewed until even God, oh, even God could not tell him anything different. You know you're in a dangerous place. And let me help you with this. You are no good to nobody when God can't even tell you who you are. When you think God is lying, I'm going to turn this mic up, I want everybody to hear me. When you think God is lying about who you are, you have insulted him. And he will let you linger and languish in the valley, in the abyss of self, low self-esteem. Because he is insulted. Because his word says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I made you so great until I only made one of you. I made sure there's not even your twin in you. I made sure you are uniquely designed. I designed you in such a way until nobody has your fingerprint. Y'all, I praise you. Nobody, I don't care how much they look like you. If you put your fingerprint down, you will realize that you are the only one. You are a monogamy. You are the only one of your kind. And how dare you tell God he has made a mistake. Our self-consciousness messes us up. That's why you can be saved and still be jacked up. Oh, I'm glad y'all shout. I'm going to try to get to it. That's why you can speak in tongues and be jacked up. Oh, God. Um, that's why, listen, that's why, amen, when people are jacked up, even though they say, you can tell them what they said. You can tell them what was said. You can tell them and rehearse to them, and they still got in their mind what they believe. Lord God, I have had the experience of recapping to somebody what I said. It's recorded, and it is witnessed, and they still turn around and tell me that I didn't say it. You know why? Because
because it is not the Holy Ghost. They are crazy. I know, I know y'all don't want to hear this. I'm preaching all I want to. You are crazy when you tell yourself stuff that does not exist. It is a mental problem. And we don't want to talk about it in church. But amen, you go to the hospital when you break your leg. You go to the hospital when you got diabetes. But you need to go to the hospital when your mind is here. And he come and ta 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 is not going to fix a sick mind. A sick mind. You need somebody, Lord help me. After you get off your knees, you need somebody to help you process what's wrong with me. I know y'all don't want to do this, but you can't go through trauma and not be affected. Okay, let me let me let me soften this up because I knew that was probably a little shock. Hallelujah. You can't go through difficult situations and not be affected. Stop sitting around talking about I'm good, ain't nothing bothering me. You're a liar. You lie to yourself so long until you are thinking that that behavior that you are operating in is okay. You cannot lose loved ones and not be affected. You can't get divorced and not be affected. Lord, help me, Jesus. You can lose a child and you lose resources and not be affected. I don't care how many times you say I'm good. I don't need nobody. You are lying. The truth is we all need somebody because God made us interdependent upon each other. And if God said it wasn't good for you to be alone, how you going to tell God you good by yourself? I didn't mean to get that excited. The self-consciousness is the realm that gets us in the most trouble. And if you don't deal with your self-conscious awareness, and if you don't get this right, it is where you make the most mistakes. Lord, I wish I could preach to the right person. Uh, when your self-consciousness is skewed, how many will admit your behavior uh, reflects what you're thinking? Uh, I don't have everybody and I don't need everybody but is there anybody with me that will admit that you've done some stupid stuff you've done some crazy stuff and when you look back at it you, your question to you is what was I thinking oh uh, it wasn't what did the Holy Ghost do and what did I put no 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 it was what was I thinking how many of you all have put your foot in your mouth oh keep sitting there like you so deep how many of you have said the wrong thing fought the wrong thing the wrong thing, and it wasn't a it wasn't a, a crisis, a spiritual crisis. It was not, in fact, a man God versus the devil. It wasn't the Holy Ghost. For, no, no, no. It was the fact that you had not the ability to think right. Some of you have posted stuff and had to take it off. It's not because the Holy Ghost told you. It's because you weren't thinking right. So Solomon, let me get Lord. Solomon in Proverbs 4 and 23, he teaches us something that I think is significant for you and I to pay attention to. He says, guard your heart. Yes! Guard. What are you, what are you saying, Solomon? He said, watch over it. Protect. Monitor the activity of your soul because out of it flows the issue. Lord, I praise you. Uh, if you don't guard your heart, uh, uh, what are you saying, preacher? What are you saying, my heart? I'm talking about what is called in the Hebrew uh, tongue, lev, L E D which is simply the immaterial personality function. You can't put your hand, I'm not talking about this bloody organ that sits in the cavity of your chest on the left side. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that organ in your body. I'm not talking about that muscle with ventricles and artery and all that. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is the immaterial personality function. You can't put your hand on your heart. Neither can you touch your mind. Mm -hmm. 
The doctor can take the brain out of your head, but he can never touch your mind. Because your mind is the house of your thoughts. And so Solomon said, God, protect. Lord, help me, I praise you. He said, watch over. Be careful what you let happen in your heart. Oh, let be careful who you put in your heart. Be, oh, you don't want to talk about this. Be careful how close you let people get to you. Be careful what you let affect you. Be Messiah. Be careful because it's going to set the course of your life. And some of us are living with the vestiges of our past. And we are living with behaviors because we let something into our heart that was illegally trespassing. And now it takes years to get it out because it's easy to get in, but it's hard to get out. I'm not trying to be funny, but in this season, if I have let no learn, let ne have not learned anything else, in this season, I'm protecting my heart. Oh, I'm not trying to be funny, but you don't belong. Yes, Lord. Yeah. The Holy Ghost woke me up this morning and said, I need you to understand this. I, I never told you to pastor these people with your heart. Yeah. I told you this is a spiritual position. Huh? And every time your heart gets involved, huh, you get jacked up. Huh? This is spiritual. Huh? And you can't make right decisions huh, with a messed up heart. Huh? You can't, oh God. Huh? You cannot do huh, what I called you to do huh, when your heart is messed up. Huh? Come on, y'all sitting there like you don't know what I'm talking about. Huh? How many blunders have you made? Huh? Because your heart got involved. Huh? Some of you ladies are mad right now. Because huh? he showed you every behavior huh? that told you he was crazy. Huh? Told you he, he was no good. Huh? But you just sitting around talking about, I just love Hoppo. Huh? I just love the man. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Huh? It wasn't because your mind was right. Huh? It wasn't because you were your cognitive abilities. Huh? We're kicking it all cylinders. Huh? Your heart got you in trouble. Huh? I know, I know you don't want to talk about it, huh? but there's a whole lot of us in here right now. Huh? After having jumped and after having shouted, huh? the truth is, huh? while I love the Lord with all my spirit, huh? my soul is in misery. Huh? My soul is in trouble. Huh? And that's why David said, huh? oh, you need a soul fix. Watch this. The text says, we're at the text, and the text says, the text, and I love this psalm because it is the second book. The book of Psalms has five books in it, and this is the second book. And this starts, this starts the second book, I think it is. Yeah, it starts the second book. And what's interesting about this is, this is called the contemplation. This psalm is called the contemplation. Do you not know that the Lord wants you to think through yes. something? See, the problem, yes. problem with us as saints is we want to come to the prayer line yes. and we want hands to be yes. laid on us yes. and we want God to fix it, Jesus, yes. like he said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on my way home, uh, you said you were fixing it. And, and, and I understand that he can fix it. But uh, um, he says, I've given you the power yes! to fix some things. And I'm a, little, I'm a little weary of the fact that I've got to now do what I already put in you to do. Because greater is he. Y'all gonna get mad and keep sitting there. It's okay. I'm still looking for the church that I really came to talk to. Um, can I tell you something? The need for medicine to get you up in the morning and the need for medicine to put you to sleep at night is because you have taken, taken the responsibility off of yourself and put it on somebody else. Now, I'm not talking 
talking about the fact that there are some chemical imbalances. But before we get to all of that diagnosis, have you really processed? I'm going to tell you why we don't process. Because to process things probably is to visit stuff that we bury in our subconscious, that we don't want to deal with. And if we do deal with it, we put psychological band-aids on it and call it easy stuff. Because uh, you don't want to hear yourself call yourself what you are. Uh, I'm a preacher. Uh, I'm looking for it. Uh, it's painful to say I'm a liar. Uh, it's painful to say I am no good. Uh, it's painful and it hurts my pride uh, to admit that I'm terrible with money. Uh, it's painful. Y'all sit there if you want to. Because the longer you sit there, I'm coming down your street. It's painful to say that I'm hot in my pants and I don't have any control over my sexual emotions. Y'all don't want to talk about this. It's painful to hear yourself call yourself what you are. And you get mad when everybody else calls you a hoe. Uh, because the truth is uh, We don't want to deal with who we are uh, I'm talking to ladies and gentlemen uh, We don't want to deal with who we are uh, But if you ever deal with who you are uh, And get somewhere by yourself uh, And say I am a jacked up no good uh, Shifty low down negro uh, That God I need your help Because uh, I'm crazy uh, And I'm doing things that are crazy uh, it don't make no sense to live like this. Hope thou in God. So why art thou? Going on in me. What's going on in me? Some of you are sitting right here right now. And when I said it, hey amen. Let me tell you what you did. Because I know that I know that spirit, but I also know you in the flesh. Let me tell you what you did. You started to divert the attention and the conversation to something else. Because you don't even in church, you don't even want to deal with it. That's why as long as you shout, you find that's oh God. This kind of preaching makes you uncomfortable and nervous because you don't want anybody to think that you are the one. But I'm so glad that when God saved me, he delivered me later on. Hallelujah. He saved my soul. He saved my spirit, filled me with the Holy Ghost. But I needed another deliverance. And I didn't know how bad I needed it until I really needed it. And all the joy that came to me, Mom, when I got delivered from public opinion, it don't matter what you think about me. Because I know what I know about me. And what I know is worse than what you know. Catch your name and tell them what I know about me is worse than what you can say. Y'all keep sitting there. Y'all keep sitting there. Tell your neighbor what I know about me is worse than what they're talking about me. Because God won't let everything be exposed. That's why you didn't learn how to keep your big mouth off of people. Because every time you talk about people, you move the cover off yourself. Folk got the rumor. God got the record. And he will never pull the whole cover off. You know why you want to praise him? Because he will never expose all the craziness about you. Expose it to other people does not give you a pass to act like it doesn't happen. So it's the contemplation. It's the contemplation. Listen to the constant contemplation. He says, he says, as the deer, as the deer called pants after the water brook. Listen to this. 
because I had to read this very carefully and very slowly because it touched me in a way. And after all these years, and I preached this, I was looking through some old notes and I had preached this so many ways. And I will be honest with you that in all my 36 years of preaching, I have never seen what I saw, Kendrick. Listen to this. As the deer longs for water in an arid and a desolate place, my soul feels the same way. Come on now. This same song that's got insecurities, this same song that's behaving crazy, because the soul is my will, the seat of my emotions, it's my intellect, it's my feelings, it's my emotional emotion. This same soul, something in my soul is longing for God. Amen. And you can't tell it because my behaviors externally don't look like my soul Amen. wants Amen. Jesus. Amen. Uh, Amen. And that's where I'm conflicted because I'm judged by what I do. Y'all keep looking straight. But people judge you by what you do. And your reputation is what it is because of what you have done. Oh, Lord, give me the courage to say what I fear. You mad with folk because they call you by what you've done. Or what they you mad because that's where your reputation came from. And it is frustrating because now you want to indict them. No, they're just talking about what you've done. And it ain't, listen, everything everybody says about you ain't no lie. See, some of y'all church folk looking all around, you know, on your phone, because you don't want nobody. It's you too. Loose me and let me go. Because I'm trying to loose you so you can be free. The issue is, the issue is, the issue is, Donald, they judge me and I got a reputation based on what they heard I did. Uh -huh. Okay? But David says what they don't know. What they don't know. Free us. Is that my soul yeah. is reaching for God. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and what I need to be is around people yeah. Yeah. that will be patient with me. Yeah. I have learned to a fault how to be long suffering because I know what it is to be reaching for God with my soul and my actions doing everything else but even oh God here I come yes Lord I just heard you even my actions doing something else is not a contradiction to what my soul is longing for my soul just is reaching for I'm reaching for something to give me comfort. I'm reaching for something to fulfill me. I'm reaching for something that completes me. And even though it's bad, what I'm reaching for, I'm still reaching. Because my soul wants... Y'all keep sitting there, but my soul wants something. I said I wasn't going to smoke no more weed. But my soul... I said I wasn't going to call her no more but my soul I said I wasn't going to call him no more but my soul y'all just keep sitting there I said I wasn't going to hang around him no more but my soul uh, I got some old friends that if in fact I reach for them they'll hook me up because I'm broke um, I know I got a price to pay for the money but uh, my soul Uh, if you ever seen somebody detoxing off of drugs, come on, their body is going through all kinds of changes. It's shaking because they're reaching for something. Yes, yes, yes. Because they have stopped something. And anytime you make up in your mind, oh God, I don't know if this is going to help. 
Every time you make up in your mind to do what you stop doing what you've done, the appetite intensifies. And the pain is great. The inter oh, can I talk to anybody? The intensity. Uh, you weren't even thinking about it, but the moment, okay, y'all, y'all, the moment you said no more. All of a sudden now, you act like you can't live without. Look at you, let me tell them the contemplation. Contemplation. He says, he says in verse number two, can I just walk through the text? He says, my, my soul thirsted for God. My, my soul my emotions are depleted. Oh, I'm dry emotionally. I don't have no more to give. Because there are some relationships that will drain you. Okay. I said there are some relationships that will drain you. You can't keep giving to everybody All right. and get nothing right. and think you're going to be okay. Right. Let me tell you how dangerous it is to become emotionally spent. Mm. When you are depleted emotionally, you look to anything and anybody right. to fill it. Right. Yeah. Right. You don't even want it. Okay, let me try it like this, because y'all quiet. Come on. You will eat stuff. <laughs> that number one is bad for your health. Yeah. Number two, you don't even really like it. Yeah. But if you get hungry enough, I don't hear nobody. If you get hungry enough, when I, I don't like McDonald's. I don't like McDonald's. I was coming home a week. And the only thing open after 12 in my path was big dog. No, y'all sit here. I'm making a point. I, on a normal day with Wendy's and Burger King and everybody else open and Chick fil A across the street, McDonald's would never see me. I'm trying. McDonald's would never, I would never turn into because I had decided I don't like McDonald's. Maybe right. fried. Yeah. That's it. I'm going to get the fries from there, but I'm going to eat a hamburger from somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. I got time. That's right, Pastor. That's right. But that night, the only thing open was McDonald's. And my craving was so great. I was so extremely hungry until I pulled up to the drive-thru at McDonald's and forced myself to eat something. I'm trying to make a point. And not even the fries were hot. But I ate it. Sean, you listening to me? I ordered a sandwich that I would never order, because I don't like it. Yeah. But I was stopped. How many things have you eaten? Okay, let me get to the good part. I do have a good part in this message, I promise you. How many things, how many drive-thrus have you pulled up to? Cause you walk. Don't dish this off on nobody else. That's it. He says, my emotions are depleted. I'm exhausted. You got to be careful when you are emotionally exhausted. You got to be careful who you talk to. I am learning not to talk. Y'all better hear me. You better be careful who you talk to when you are exhausted. 
because you were telling way too much. You would divulge way too much. Now, don't, I'm not trying to be funny. This is for real. When you are emotionally exhausted, you say things that you would not say out of anger, out of hurt. Maybe I'm in the wrong church, but is there anybody beside me that knows what it is to talk when you should? Okay, not enough of y'all. I hate to call y'all's names. But you say stuff. And before you can unpost, somebody done screenshot. Now hear me. I'm not indicting you. I'm not indicting you. I hope this message really, I'm talking like this because I want you to get it. I'm not indicting you. God help me today. I really intend for you to walk out of this place with help. With help today. I mean it for real. I have been laboring over this. I pray to God today that God heal your emotions today. When you are exhausted, you become vulnerable to Satan's attacks. You become vulnerable to people who will mismanage you. You will become prey to people who were waiting for a way to get in. You, when you are vulnerable, you will talk to people who are just stacking information. And it's almost like they are bugging your room. Yeah. They're just gathering tapes. Because at the given moment, Jesus, when you don't dance to their music, they will turn on you. I wish I could preach to the right people. They will turn on you and they will use your own words. Said you can't even trust the one that lies in your bosom. Yes. Yes. That's the Bible. Listen, so verse 3, listen to what he says. He says, I want to, verse 3, I want to appear before the living God, but listen to what he says in verse 3. My tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say to me, Where he is thy God? Yes, yes. When you're emotionally distraught, Nothing makes you happy. No, no. When you are emotionally unstable and exhausted emotionally, good times are not good. Yes. Yes. Lord, help me. A five-star hotel and a five-star restaurant doesn't even feel good or taste good. I know what it is to be in a presidential suite with all the amenities that you can imagine. And it won't be any different than a Super 8 with a twin bed with cigarette holes. No, no. You don't know what I'm talking about. With cigarette holes in the spread. It won't even matter that the floors are heated. And there's a TV in, in the mirror. That's right. I have stayed in places that if I showed you, you go, oh my God. The reality is I don't even remember. I don't even remember the opulence and the elegance of the aesthetics of a place because you check in emotionally and you check out in the same way. I sit in first class on most flights I take. Yes. Because the frequency of my travel and it don't feel no better than my knees and my chest when you are emotionally Come on, man. Make a plane. You can live in a house 
that has all the trappings of success in it. But it won't matter when you are emotionally exhausted because a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things he possesses. For what does it profit a man? Oh, I wish I had a church now. If he gained the whole world, watch this, and lose, not heaven, not his spirit, but his soul. When you lose your soul, you lose every reason to be happy. When you lose, look at your neighbor and tell them, don't lose your soul. Don't lose your soul. Oh, God. Uh, tell your neighbor, today, I decree and declare that God is going to heal your soul. If you believe what you just said, I need you to praise him. Somebody's about to get healed in a place that really matters. So watch what he says. He says, my tears have been like, for me, night and day, and all of that stuff. And then, this is the problem. This is the problem in this, in this, in this particular verse, is that my calamitous circumstance have caused me to be paranoid. Wow. Have you ever been through so much until you're paranoid? Paranoid. Nobody? Yes. Have you ever been through so much until you think everybody is talking yes. about you? Yes. Have you been, oh God. You come, you come around people and immediately you become defensive. Yes. You think nobody likes you. Okay, y'all don't want to talk about this, but I do. I really do. Because I feel like if I talk about it, somebody else is going to be helped by it. When when you go through so many calamitous circumstances, you think that everybody is against you. Mm. And they can tell you that they're with you. Yeah. And you don't believe them. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. hundred people can say, I'm with you. And ten can say, I'm not with you. Yeah. Yeah. And you think that the 90 right. wow. yes. feel like the 10. Yes. Right. Yes. And you will start treating the 90 yeah. yes. Yes. with contempt. Because of the Tim that defect. That's the truth. Because circumstances, calamities can make you paranoid. Yes, yes. And I tell you what else makes you paranoid? Sin. You ought to think that, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sin makes you paranoid. Yeah. Let me, put, let me try it like this. When you are guilty, you think everybody knows. When you ain't doing right, you think everybody knows your business. When you've been hurt by people, you think everybody has an agenda. And some of us are missing out on some great friendships because we think that this one is like the last one. Maybe if you took a little more time in vetting people, you wouldn't keep going through the same cycle. Wow. Thank you, sir. Maybe stop jumping into relationships so quick. Maybe if you stop being so thirsty to have a BFF. Oh, I preach to you today. Maybe stop being thirsty for attention. I was teaching the other week in, in, in um, Charleston, and I made a statement uh, with a group of men, and I'll say it today because y'all just know me, but many of us suffer from being attention whores. Okay? Just got to have attention. They don't care what kind of attention they want. We will lie. Listen, I know folk that will lie Make up stories on things just to get the attention of people. You know it didn't happen. Some folk will create gossip just so people yes. will call them. Yes. Attention holders. How you doing? 
Uh, you ever see people you just hate that? You just want to say, hey, how you doing? Half an hour or go in church, they were like this. After church, how you doing? Oh, Attention whore. Starving for attention. Be careful because that borderlines on, and these are all psychological terms, but I hope you understand, on narcissism. And there are a whole lot of narcissistic, narcissistic people. And you gotta be careful because the enemy cannot create anything. But when he knows that you are like that, he will attach himself to that and he will make it worse. Newsflash, everybody's not thinking about you. Everybody's not talking about you. You can make a life decision and life will go on. Let me get, oh boy, my time is gone. I'm sorry. He says, watch this in verse 4. When I remember these things, I poured out my soul in me. Uh, for I had known the multitude. David is saying, uh, my problem is I got a memory of how it used to be. Right. Yeah. Come on now. You and I, let, let's talk. Can we talk? Let's talk. Yeah. Oh. You know what our frustration is? We know how good it used to be. Yes, sir. We know that life wasn't always yes. this bad. Right. Amen. Okay, y'all see. You know that you haven't always been this low. The enemy will always fight you with your memory. Come on. He will always fight you to tell you how it used to be. And if anything has changed from it, where is your God? You must be jacked up and God is not with you. Okay, y'all don't want to preach with me, but I know what it is to look out and the devil tell you. The Lord has left you. Yes, yes, yes. You know what it is to have too much confidence in people. Right. And when they defect out of your life, you think that it's God right. making an exit. Yes, right. But I have learned lately yes, to put no confidence yes, in the flesh. Because right. right. the arm of flesh right. will fail you. Yes. And if God is for you, before you say who, settle the issue. Is God for you? Because if you don't know God is with you, you will always be paranoid by people's defection. Where is your God now? And if you're not careful, you'll buy into that. Not understanding that one of the things you have to manage in life is transitions. You have to manage change. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are not successfully living until you learn how to manage transitions. Things are going to change. You know why I'm shouting? Because I'm finally realizing that everything changes. And every change ain't bad. Something need to change so that everything can change. I want to praise him because the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. But you know what I feel like running and jumping? Not because of the steps of a good man, but I feel like praising him because the stops of a good man. Oh, uh, anybody, can anybody in here beside me praise him for what he stopped? I know you want to say I praise him because he ordered my steps, but I want to praise him for some doors he closed. I want to praise him for some stops he made in my life. He made me stop here. He made me quit this. Thank God for the exposure because sometimes God has to expose you so he can stop you before you destroy you. Let me, let me, let me finish. Let me finish. Can I finish? Yes. Yes. Can I 
Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If you're not careful, God will remove people from your life. Yes, he will. And the reason why he does it, because our dependency is so on them mm -hmm. until we are crippled. That's right. We are handicapped. Yes. Your faith will be more in them than in him. You know, when I tell black folks something, can I tell y'all something? Part of our problem is, as soon as we can afford something, we buy it. That's a problem. We immediately shut down our brain and won't learn anything more because we can afford to pay somebody to do it for us. Every now and then you need to clean your own house. Every now and then you need to fix your own car. But at least get up under the hood and look. Every now and then you need when somebody's doing something for you, Show me how you did it. Then that then you need to sit with the tax attorney, with the tax accountant. Y'all ain't say with your tax preparer. Tell what does this line mean? Yes. Now I'm just paying you. No, 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 no. Because there's a whole lot of black entertainers that died broke because they had money, but they had no knowledge. And I'm going to tell you why you want to make sure you know some stuff. Just in case people flip. Yes. My grandmother, the other Ross, and I love, I love Graham. Graham told me one day, she said, come in this kitchen. She used to live with us. Hey, my brother. She said, come in here. I said, Graham, what? She said, I'm going to teach you how to cook, honey. Yes, yes, right. That's I said, right. I'm going to cook. There you go. No, she said, just in case you marry one of old gals and don't want to cook for my baby, you gotta eat. That's not my testimony. And I didn't really learn how to. Do. But the whole point she was trying to make is you better stop being so dependent. So that if life changes things, you can keep rolling. Lord God, let me get to the good part. Look on your neighbor and say, neighbor. You got to keep it together. Oh, Lord. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Things are out of work in my life. But today I made up in my mind. I'm going to keep it together. Yeah, Lord, I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to lose my mind. I've made up in my mind that if I got to go by myself, I'm going to go if I have to go by myself. Because for God I live, yeah. And for God I'll die well. A charge to keep our hand a God to glorify and every guy is so the same fitted for the sky that's it I want you to get this today here it is, verse 5. David does what I think is therapeutic. He talks to himself. He says, So, why art thou cast down? He's talking to his will, he's not talking to the spirit. He's not being spooky. He says, so. He says, Jenkins, he said, man, what's wrong with you? Why are you so low? You better ask yourself some yes. questions. I wrote down some questions. Right, and I thought, 
would be, they help you with the conversation. David takes his faith and he reasons with his fears. He takes his hope and he argues with his hurt. You got to take what you desire, what you want out of your life, and argue against how you feel. I'm hurt, but I still want. That's right. That's right. Amen. Y'all, see, I don't understand why y'all, see, this is the part I need y'all to jump on. I'm hurt, but I still want. Hope is the earnest expectation with desire. I'm in pain. I am bleeding. My soul is in misery, but I still want better for my life. And if you can hold on to hope, Hope will heal the hurt. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. If you can hold on to your desires, it'll heal whatever's happening. It is when desire is gone, it makes the heart sick. Hope deferred. Makes the heart sick. Yes. But when the desire comes, it's the tree of life. So, so, and so. Here it is. Here it is. Listen to the questions. Listen to the questions. Listen to the questions. Why art thou disquieted within me? Where has my quiet gone? I know what it is to deal with the inner Lord. The clock has run out, but can I have a few more minutes just to hear? Where is my quiet gone? I know what it is to be in a room with the lights off, the TV off, the radio not playing, and the phone not ringing, and still it is noisy as Times Square at 12 noon. Anybody know what I'm talking about? How it is to have so much inner noise going on until. There's so much inner noise going on until you can't even hear yourself think. Uh, you, you know what it is to get down to pray? Get down to pray and you say, Father in heaven, we want to thank you. We want to give you glory. We want to praise you. Thank you, Lord, for working this situation. And before you can get to the situation, your mind is... Yes. Something else and yes, yes. try to bring it back, and then yes. some another painful situation. And God, yes. then you get mad. I'm talking to real people here, man. Yes. You, you, you won't shout off this, perhaps. Yes. You get mad, and all of a sudden, there's so much noise yes. going on. I know this don't sound too deep and spiritual, but it takes me sometimes a long time to process. Yes. It takes me a long time to sometimes process a text. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because I fight through mental and emotional yes. ADD. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. When you got so much going on in your mind, yes. so much going on in your life, yes. I got to do this. Yes. But when I do this, my mind goes this way, right. that, right. this right. way, right. and that way, yes. this way, and that way. I got health issues. I got uh, family issues. Come on, I got money issues. I got marriage issues. I got church issues. Come on, talk to me, somebody. I got all this going on at the same time, and here I am trying to get a word for your life. Yes, Every time I try to get a word for my life. 
here comes all of these issues. Uh, yes. right. Trying to hinder me, how to distract yes. me. And you tell me to pray in the spirit. Mm -hmm. You can't pray right if you can't think right. And I tell you, you can't skip over, you can't skip over your soul and get in the spirit. No, no, that's not how this works. Let this mind uh, 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 was in Christ Jesus. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the ring. It's my mind, it's my soul, Terry, that's got to get in alignment because my spirit can't receive anything that my mind won't open itself up right. to. And I know you want to yell out I know you want to do all of that. But that's empty and that's religious practice. It's void of any power when your mind ain't right. You need to get somewhere. That's why real prayer has got to take place in private. You get somewhere where you can tell the truth to God. Say, Lord, I'm mad. I'm hurt. I'm angry. I'm confused. This don't feel good. I need you to help my soul. Why art thou disquieted within me? Why is there so much noise inside? You can have so much noise going on the inside until you become quiet on the outside. Yes. I tell people all the time, as long as I'm arguing, long as I'm trusting, as long as I'm talking, you're safe. That's a safe place. Yes. What is scary is when I stop talking. That's right. Yes, yes. That's right. Now, I'm not talking about in a threatening way. I'm not talking about that. What's scary for me yes. is when I stop talking. Yes. Because what happens when I stop talking is I start an answering my own questions. Yes. And if my soul is already jacked up, my answers are going to reflect. Yes. 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 So I've got questions about certain things. But my soul is answering my question. My soul is already in misery. So when I answer my own questions, it are wrong answers. You know why the devil wants you to get so jacked up until you go inside? Because he knows you won't get any answers. Because at that point, you're not asking God. You're telling God how it is. Come on, talk to me somebody. You're not seeking God for direction. You're telling God, this is how my life is. And some of us in here have resigned that this is all that life's going to be. You know why your relationship can't get no better? Because you won't. You won't. You refuse to confront the enemy in on me. Amen. Yes. That's right. Come on now. And until you have a candid conversation hey. and stop blaming somebody outside of you. Right. Nobody in your life is responsible for your peace. That's right. That's right. Nobody in your life is responsible for your joy. Yes. yes. Do you not know that your house, your, your spouse, is not responsible for your happiness. Amen. 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 You know how many, how many marriages have failed because we have unrealistic expectations of somebody outside of us. Amen. You didn't do this. You don't do that. You didn't do that. You don't even know what makes you happy. How you expect I need to know? You don't even know what you like. But you want me to know. Right. Y'all ain't saying right. My wife knows that there are certain things that I don't want to eat. Yes. You know why she knows it? Because I told her. <laughs> now, if she cooks it, she cooking it because she just wants to be hungry. <laughs> because she knows I don't like it. Or, me having a conversation in my own mind, she ain't cooking it for me. Because I have armed her with the information. She knows this because I've communicated. Y'all don't hear what I'm trying to say. She knows this because I've communicated this. Yes. There you go. Amen. Amen. How you expect somebody to know what you need and what you want? 
right. when you won't see it. Forget that. You don't even know. Forget talking with somebody else. You don't even know. This might be the week before Resurrection Sunday. These might be the days that you take a little time for yourself and say, what do I need? Yes. What is it that completes me? What is the fulfillment of my joy? Independent. I work a lot. My life is ministry and all that other stuff. But I will be honest with y'all, I love you. But I really do need some time for me. Because if you ain't going to give me no vacation check, I'm all that clap. And I'm kidding. It's not a vacation. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not. I'm not talking about a vacation. I'm not talking about a cruise. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about a location. I'm not talking about a location. Just hear me, because a, lo a location change is not gonna matter. I just told y'all you can be in a five star. You can be on the beach, and it won't matter if your soul is disquiet. I just start realizing. I gotta find me. Yes, sir. Because if I don't find me, then all I'm doing is being utilitarian. Yes. Simply, you just a utility. Yes. And the grace that's on your life is that God will always give you the ability to function well for where you're needed. Wow. But I wonder if the knife could talk in the drawer. What would he say? I wonder if that, that knife that you use all the time to cut everything, if they had a voice, what would he say? Do you even know that I'm dull? Do you even know that you keep using me to cut and I'm losing my itch? I'm wondering If that cell phone could talk. Oh, <laughs> Say, I'm so sick of being powered on. I give you a red light to let you know that my battery's low. And all you do is plug me up and keep talking. Oh. Y'all, y'all. You keep plugging me up. You keep talking on me. And you don't even know that I wish you would just put power me down hey. yes, yes. and let me charge all the way up. Hey. Yes, 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 if your soul could really talk, yeah. what is your soul saying today? I got more, but I'm not going to even. I want everybody to say it. If your soul could talk, what's your soul say? If your soul could make a statement right now, what's your soul say? I'm tired. Hallelujah. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yes, hallelujah. Your soul could talk. Y'all see me at church, but you have no idea. Right. If your soul could talk, what's your soul saying? Do you find yourself every day saying, keep it together? You know you're in trouble when you got to tell yourself, don't go off. No, I'm serious. Yes. I preach this to you today from a very real and authentic place. How many times have you had to tell yourself recently, don't go off? How many times have you had to wrestle between that with everything? God will do. God will send you a word from an unexpected source.
tell you, you're closer now. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Than you ever been. And that's why you feel like giving up. Amen. That's why it's so intense. Yes. Because if you hang in there, it, you might be one. Can you imagine being one step away from a happiness in a life that you never thought existed? Amen. God will give you clues. He'll give you things on the way to just let you know. Don't blow it. Don't give up yet. Don't, don't, don't. Don't do it. Don't do it. I know what I'm talking about here. I pray very simple prayers to God. And I know some of y'all are very, you know, articulate and all that. But I pray very simple prayers to God. You probably couldn't understand or I don't even want you to hear it. But I say things like God okay, now God, you know, if you want me to keep me doing this, you gonna have to, you know, yeah. hook a brother up. Yes. Right. Right. Show me something because right. if you don't, I'm telling you what I'm getting ready to do. Yes. 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 And I start rationalizing. Yeah. I ain't the only one. Yeah. I ain't the only one ever been in this place. Right. It'll be alright. And the Lord. We'll tap somebody on the shoulder and tell them, go down there and tell my son. Yes. It's closer. Yes. I think I was talking to the church the other night and I said that I was told, I was told, I'm not know if it's true, but I was told that a woman in childbirth is the closest to death. They say that you are closest to death at the point of birth. I don't think you hear. At the point of childbirth, you're at the point of death. And your system decides what to do. But your system decides what to do based on what you want. And let me take it a little further for this message. Your soul has Your soul has a decision to make. Either we die here, yes, or we live like we have never lived before. Yes, sir. But one thing is for sure: you can't be, you can't go on like this. And this. For somebody under the sound of my voice, you hear me in the Holy Ghost. You're at that point. Yes. And you rather miscarry than to make the soul's decision. But today, if you hear this word, yes. get to this altar right now. Get to this altar.